Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is on belief systems in trading. A lot of you guys think that you're actually trading, but what you're not understanding is it's actually your belief system that is trading for you. So today we're gonna to talk about how that belief system actually manifests itself inside the stock market. And it's a very interesting topic because, well, in most careers in life, in most jobs, in most businesses, your belief system doesn't really matter that much. You go to work and it's like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a spreadsheet today. Okay, great. You go to work, you try to sell somebody a car, whatever it is. But in trading, your belief systems, your experiences every day, yesterday, the day before, et cetera, they manifest themselves in the market, whether you had a positive day yesterday, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're frustrated, et cetera. And many of you are trading upon false assumptions. You think your belief system is a certain way, but your actionable outcome is something totally different. So it's a very, very powerful topic because without understanding who's really trading, without understanding your belief system, you're never gonna be a profitable trader, not ever. If you're gonna to lie to yourself and deny who's really trading, it's gonna be a struggle. And here's the thing, most people haven't had to really deal with their belief system head on, right? It's something that kind of sits in your subconscious, so to speak. And we'll talk a little bit about cognitive dissonance as well. For those of you who don't know what that is, watch the lecture, it's pretty good. Um, so a couple charts in here, but mostly guys, we talk about psychology today. Some people have emailed me and said, you know, you need to do more psychology lectures and lessons. Well, that's what I'm doing today. I think it's a really good one because without understanding your core belief system, you're dead in the water in trading. You're never gonna make money, okay? So if you like this video, please click the like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. Don't forget those click notifications. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's topic is <clears throat> believe it or you'll never achieve it. Um, it sounds like a cliche topic, kind of like Nike, just do it, right? Uh, but there's a lot of truth into this. So today we're going to talk about belief systems as they relate to trading. It's going to be largely a psychology-based lecture. Um, because, well, I've been getting a lot of requests for psychology-based lectures. We do it's tons and tons of chart-based lectures, right, on candlesticks and bottoming tails and support and resistance, even occasionally level two. Um, we haven't done as many. Now, in fairness, recently we have. We've done a couple of these in the last couple of few months. Um, but uh, I thought this was an important one, guys, because uh, a lot of you are just, you're not understanding uh, what trading is really about. And when you finally do understand what trading is really about, um, you don't understand your own personality and how that can relate to trading. Um, so the question basically to be asked is, are, are your beliefs creating a barrier to success for you guys? I mean, is, is that what's really happening here? Um, you know, uh, Jeff Yates uses this analogy frequently, but some of you have heard it before. You know, in 1954, Roger ba Bannister broke the four minute mile, right? Uh, three minutes and 59 seconds and something, something. Okay. And before he broke it, there was this belief, right? That it really just wasn't possible for a human being to break the four minute mile. Well, within a month, within 30 days, okay, no less than 30 runners, 30, broke the four minute mile. So when you think about that, at that point, did something happen? I mean, did power bars come out? Did Gatorade come out during that 30 day period? I mean, wh what happened? I mean, how in the world is it that for years, decades, people couldn't break the four minute mile? One man breaks it and within 30 days, is it just coincidence? It could be, maybe human beings were just ready at that time. But the point simply is, it's most likely a psychological barrier, right? A belief, it's like, think of it this way. You see something that's so pie in the sky and you're like, that can't be done. And then someone does it and you're like, well, shoot. If they could do it, then maybe I could too, okay? So the point simply is you have to believe something if you want to achieve it, all right? If you don't believe it, then you'll never achieve it, hence the title, right? Just forget about it. Um, so, you know, it, it's interesting. I'm going to dig deeper into this, but you could certainly make a strong argument that the beliefs that we hold about the world around us, right, about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about the world around us, 
it determines how we act day to day, right? Um, it influences, it directly influences our actions, okay? Um, and there's a term, I don't know if many of you are familiar with it, it's called cognitive dissonance, right? It's basically when somebody gives you new information, but the new information conflicts with what you currently believe. And it puts a level of stress upon you because you believed something, you believed X, but Y is really true. And now you have to figure out how to reconcile what you've believed for so long isn't actually true, okay? So my point in this, and don't worry, we're gonna tie it all in, okay, is how you approach this business largely determines how you will do in this business, okay? And your belief systems towards this business are a big, big part of that. But before we dig any deeper into this deep, deep topic, we first must talk about when will the insanity stop? I got a good one for you guys this week. When will the insanity stop? My goodness gracious. I'm going to do, I think, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe in June or, or January. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to do like a yearly review of when will the insanity stops. I'm literally just going to piece them all together, all like 50 of them that I do throughout the year, and I'm just going to piece them together, put some music to it, and we're going to just have like a big laugh, laugh station. The worst part is these things aren't funny at all. I mean, they're, it's serious stuff. So what's this week's? my giant RKT mistake. And I kind of feel a little bad um, because this person was certainly admitting their mistake, which is always a step in the right direction. Um, but this is, it's just sad when I read some of these things. Like I went all in on calls. And when I say all in, I mean, I have less than a hundred hours left in my bank account, all in. I don't have a lot of money, but I truly believed RKT had to go up. I had $17,000, my entire savings and checking account in calls. And I'm sure tomorrow they'll be practically worthless. I have a baby coming in three weeks. And now I have to tell my wife I lost all of our money. I don't think there's anything funny about that. It reminds me of that scene in Boiler Room, right? When he gives all his money to that guy and uh, loses their down payment on the house and all that stuff. and. It's just sad. I mean, I truly believed, right? Which is great for today's topic, belief systems in trading, right? They have a huge impact on your success or failure in this business. And it's just, it's really disappointing um, reading these sometimes. Sometimes you just laugh and go, that was just really foolish. But when you see somebody who's got a baby on the way, they put their entire savings and their entire checking um, account money into it. Yeah, sure, we could sit here and go, duh, idiot, right? We could. But the reason I bring these up every week is to, to help you guys understand that this stuff happens. Like this isn't some guy that you knew, you know, once in, a mil once in a blue moon, once in a million years. This is every single week I pull these up. And I could pull way more. I could probably do 10 of these a week. Take the business seriously, all right? That's your entire life saving, $17,000. Maybe you should think better of putting all your eggs in one basket about something you clearly have no idea about, okay? Clearly have no idea about, okay? So I just brought this one up as something to wake you up, shake you up, humble you a little bit, that people do go through this stuff. And sure, we should feel bad for them, but it's, it's a self-inflicted wound. You don't ever want to be in this position, ever, not ever. So when I preach money management every week and you get tired of hearing me preach money management every week, think about this person. All right. Think about this person. Hey, I got a baby on the way. I got to tell my wife I lost everything. And for some people, $17,000 could be years worth of savings. Think of this person next time you're getting ready to do something really, really stupid. Think of this person. Okay. All right. So understanding belief systems. All right. I don't think many of you really have any idea what your belief system is because it's rarely been challenged. And when you come into trading, you're going to get challenged, right? I mean, on a serious topic, like when you work for somebody else, how often would you say your quote, your belief system is challenged? Not very often, right? I mean, you go to work and you fill out your spreadsheets, you clock in at nine, you go home at five o'clock. Every once in a while, your boss asks you how your family is or can you stay on the weekends? And uh, what do you think about the, the Green Bay Packers this past weekend? Blah, 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 blah. There's not a lot of careers out there that, that challenge your inner core. 
So trading does that. And this is why I'm commenting because most people, they come to the markets, right? Because of, of hype, right? The lure, this easy money, the availability of, you know, I don't know, this system, this methodology, this technique, this trading room, right? Something. They're out there thinking, well, so-and-so, Jared's got the answer. You know, Joe Schmo has the answer. John Doe has the answer, right? And I mean, I guess when you think about it, it's never been easier to be a trader. It's never been more popular to be a trader than in, uh, in 2021, right? It's crazy popular. You got Diamond Hands, you got YOLO, you got GME, you got Wall Street Bets, you got Reddit, right? But did you come prepared? My guess is you didn't come prepared, okay? So you have to understand, guys, before I dig really deep into this, you're not actually trading the markets you know that right like you're not really trading the markets you're trading your belief system about the market versus or against however you want to put it someone else's belief system about the market a good example of that was sono today unmall didn't like it i liked it right there was that other trade on uh what was it what was that stock today i'll go down and pan it out here um vtnr unmall liked it i didn't like it right you're trading your opinion about the market versus someone else's opinion about the market. And this is where most people just lose it. They just don't get that it has nothing to do with the market. It has everything to do with your opinion of the market. The market just is. So if you don't understand your belief system, you're going to kind of struggle to generate profits because you don't understand what it is you're doing. You don't understand what you believe or you don't understand why you believe it. You don't even, you know, you're just lost. You're, you're chasing butterflies, like I said to somebody else earlier, okay? You're going to act out every little drama that goes on in your life. It's going to act itself out in your trading. Tell me I'm wrong. Have a bad day, you act it out in your trading. You have a good day, you act it out in your trading. You have confidence, you push the button. You having a bad day, maybe you're trying to make some money back, or that, you're acting it out. So every little thing that goes on outside of trading manifests itself inside of your trading. I know, but in a normal job, that doesn't happen. Sure, you go to work pissed off because your wife yelled at you. Fine, so what? You're just sitting down doing your spreadsheet. Maybe you get a little less work done that day. So what? Maybe you meet a client and you're not as chippery as you normally would be. Trading's different. It's completely and utterly different. Okay, so the markets just give back to you what you project to them. And many of you don't even know what you're projecting um, to the market. So I want to get into this. But before we do, I'm going to look at a couple charts because most of what we're going to talk about today is not chart related. It's going to be text related. And many of you fall asleep when there's too much text because, well, you're part of the microwave generation and instant gratification and becoming the next Facebook or all you think about that or TikTok. Um, this this is a positive manifestation, right? Gap down, wide range red bar, followed by a narrow range green bar. Get in at 135.30, your stop's right here, and it goes all the way down. This thing ended up going like 10R, okay? And you go, okay, that's good. My belief was this stock was a good pattern, and this is my entry, this is my stop, and this is my target, okay? But why am I bringing this particular chart up? I'm bringing it up because I made $1,000 in this, and I should have made about 1700 Something crept into my belief system. I believed it was a good trade, hence I took it. So that's pretty good so far, all right? I believe in this pattern. I took the pattern. Good so far. Your belief systems are on track. But I got out too soon. I nickeled and dimed it. Why? Why would I do such a thing? Well, the last couple months, we've seen a general lack of follow-through. Now, the last couple weeks, that's changed. But the last couple months, we've seen a general lack of follow-through. We're getting two to one, three to one, four to one has been challenging. So my belief was follow-through is lacking. And that belief manifested itself in the way I managed this trade. And you're looking at it going, well, geez, you know, a thousand bucks isn't bad. No, it's, it's crap when you're supposed to make 1700. It's crap did the wrong thing. So my belief system caused me to get out of this too soon. My belief that things aren't following through, my lack of trust in my plan at the time, well, cost me money. Okay. And we'll do it again. We'll do it again. This one really pissed me off. <laughs> you thought the other one did. This is a couple of days ago. I called the markets long, 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 long. I was all in long, meaning I was so confident the markets were going to go long. Well, I was pretty right with my assessment. 
But what was the result of that assessment? Well, I took two trades and there's nothing I can do about BA, so to speak, meaning nah, it wasn't the world's best trade, but it wasn't the world's worst trade. But I should have gotten more money back, meaning I only ended up making $1,300 on the QQQ. And I should have made, well, 1700 bucks. I cost myself 400 So between two trades, that's $1,100. So of the three trades we just looked at, $1,100 in three days. Why? Because of my concern or my belief of a lack of follow through. Now, what's the whole point in me telling you this? That your belief systems manifest themselves in action. It's not just a belief anymore. Inside your head, it's a belief, but that belief turns into action or lack of action. And in this particular circumstance or instance, it cost me $1,100. Big picture, not a huge deal, but it could be if you continue to let those false or negative belief systems manifest themselves through negative action. And many of you are doing this. Many of you are doing this, okay? So there's kind of, you know, when you're, when you're, uh, I'm going to transition just real quick. When you're a new trader, right, what do you tend to do? You follow the herd, okay? You watch and do what others are doing. And that's kind of human nature. That's what we all do, right? Comfort in numbers. But where you go wrong, there's nothing wrong with generally following somebody else or trying to learn from someone else. That's, again, what people do. But you ever notice, and be honest here, it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it. I won't publicly flog you. You ever notice it's easier for you to take a trade when someone else is taking the trade with you? When I call the trade or Unmall calls the trade or someone else in the room mentions it and you're like, you know what? I like that trade too. You ever notice it's easier when someone else likes what you like? Why? It's not about more confidence taking the trade. And I mean, that is a part of it. That's a piece of it, right? That's a piece of it. But what's the bigger picture we're talking about here? Misery loves company. You're like, what does that mean, Jared? If it works, it works. Yeah, but you're in it with a group now. So guess what? You can go, well, Cliff likes it too. Deepak likes it too. Braden likes it too. Jose likes it too. It's not just me. I'm not on an island here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Thank you, Kyle. Perfect. You're deflecting blame. You're deflecting blame. You're going, well, it wasn't just me who liked it. Like, when kids say, well, I wasn't the only one who stole a cookie, what, does that mean it was okay because Johnny stole a cookie with you? No, but this is what exactly, you're rationalizing why you did something and the fact that other people did the same thing helps you to rationalize this. So if it doesn't work, you're kind of like, well, I'm going to buy it because others are buying it. it, makes me feel good. And if it doesn't work, then it's like, well, I can't. I can't be blamed entirely because, you know, 20 other people took it. They were wrong too. I mean, I'm not that bad. This is a problem. This is things that novice traders do, okay? Professional traders don't do those things. They lead the pack. They don't follow the pack, all right? And you need to get out of this mindset, all right? So we're going to talk a little bit about it, belief systems, okay? So there's kind of five areas of belief systems, all right? There's evidence, there's tradition, there's authority, there's association, there's revelation. I did not come up with these five, okay? Um, so when you think about it, evidence is, is pretty obvious. It's based on ration um, and logic. It's kind of like saying, all right, uh, I'm going to drive to work and I'm going to take Highway 5 and it takes 37 minutes. I'm going to drive to work and I'm going to take Highway 805 and it takes 24 minutes. Well, that's empirical data. You've driven this highway 10 times. You've driven this highway 10 times, and one is 13 minutes faster. That's an evidence-based belief system, okay? Let's be honest. Most of us don't start out life with evidence-based belief systems, okay? We start out with all the other kinds of belief systems, right? So evidence-based is just empirical data, okay? And Generally speaking, this is, well, this is a good way to go about things. Having the evidence to back up your claim is always a good thing, okay? It would certainly be great if the political establishment would use evidence instead of just telling us what to do, right? So some of this, though, kind of borderlines your personal experience with someone else's personal experience. What I'm getting at is occasionally 
evidence can be skewed, right? Most of the time, it's pretty clear cut, right? But sometimes your personal experience is different than someone else's personal experience. And again, that could have an impact on what, how you see the world and what you believe in the world, okay? So when you, when you base things off evidence, it's generally, in my opinion, the best way to go about it, okay? Now, tradition is one that can be dangerous. And it's very interesting. When I, when I was preparing to do this lecture, um, which was a little while back, actually, I've been, I had this one in my pocket for a while. I started when I went out at restaurants. I started just casually eavesdropping and listening on people's conversations. Seriously, I know we all do it to, to some extent, but I started like really paying attention. Does that make sense? And what do you think I was, what do you think I was paying attention for? Anybody, any, any idea? What do you think I was trying to listen in for while eavesdropping on other people's conversations at restaurants or not just restaurants, but when you're out and about, maybe you're at the park. Gossip. <laughs> yes. Gossip, that's what it was. <laughs> How much doge they bought, that's it, right? Any idea? Trying to get insider trading information? Insanity, the big thing? How stupid people really are. That's the closest answer. That's the closest answer. What I was really listening for was misinformation. I'm serious. And there were topics that people would talk about that I wasn't familiar with. So I would either Google it or duck, duck, go it or just let it go. But there were other topics where I was very certain about the evidence. And what I'm getting at, guys, is this is how false information spreads. Okay, so for example, for example, this one happened yesterday, actually. Okay, I was at AJ's supermarket sitting outside eating my salmon for lunch and there was two guys sitting behind me talking on the patio. Okay, and they were talking about the new proposed tax plan. Okay, their numbers were completely off, completely off in terms of what level the capital gains tax is, is proposed to be raised to, right? What level income taxes were supposed to be raised to. My point is, is one guy was telling the other guy, and the other guy's, oh, wow, I didn't know that. My point simply, this has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with people sharing misinformation. And this, a lot of times, can translate into what we're talking about, why you believe what you believe, okay? Tradition, authority, association. We're going to get to this. I'm leading you down there. So I was listening and thinking, wow, this is completely and utterly false to the point where you just want to turn around and tell them, like, that's just not true. But, you know, you don't want to butt into somebody else's conversation. So my point is, now what? Now John tells Fred, Fred goes home and tells his wife, oh my gosh, do you know what the new tax plan is? And yet no one, no one goes to look for the evidence, right? No one goes on, you know, let me, let me go search about this. Not no one, but very few people. So now all of a sudden this spreads. Now you're going, well, geez, Jared, how in the world does this relate to trading? Because you hear something from somebody like, for example, it's okay to risk 10% on your trades. Well, why? Because Johnny told me so. What do you know about Johnny? I, I don't know. He seems like a decent guy. My point is that's one example. But we do this all the time in life. You hear about something and you take it as fact without checking it. That's why the term fact checkers have become so popular lately, right? So, so let me give you an example. Tradition, you do it because, well, it's always been done that way. Well, does that mean you know why it's been done just because it's always been done that way, right? So if you think about a, a story, right? I, I've told this story before, right? I, I told this story, I think I told this in professional trading strategies years and years ago. Um, but for example, there is this third generation daughter, okay? And she was asked, well, why do you always cut your, your roast in half when you put it in the oven, right? Why do you cut it in half? Um, and she said, well, it's because it makes the meat more tender, right? That's, that's what my mom used to say. I mean, I cut the roast in half. It makes the meat more tender. Oh, okay. Right. And then they asked the mother. So now we're going to the second generation, ask the mother. And it's like, well, I learned from my mom, it was to save time, right? Just to save time. 
That's it. That's the the reason we cut the meat in half. So the, the the daughter, in this case, granddaughter, I suppose, says, well, it makes it more tender. The mom says, oh, well, it just cuts the cooking time in half. But then when the grandma who started the tradition says, well, why did you put it in there? Well, because it wouldn't fit. What? So how in the world did this tradition, they all do the same thing, right? They're all cutting the roast in half. But why they do it is completely different. What's the purpose here? What's the point? Where are you going with this, Jared? You're rambling on. Why you do what you do? Do you know why you do what you do? Do you know why you move your stop loss to break even at 1R? Do you really know why or do you do it because I do it? Most of you just do it because somebody else told you to. Now, there are times in life that's helpful and your parents say, don't go across the street. It's dangerous. Look both ways. Well, you're going to trust them and you... In some cases, you're going to have to trust because, well, the evidence on that one would be pretty tough, right? That would be a tough one, tough one to handle, right? Um, so then you go authority. Let's move to authority. You trust doctors, teachers, quote, experts, right? Well, why do we trust experts? Well, because they have experience. They have education. They're the, you know, you're 18 and they're 30 and you're in college and your teacher has a PhD or whatever, okay? Why do we do this? I don't want to bring that one up, Anthony Corey. <laughs> right? So why do we believe certain things? Well, because my doctor said it's true. Well, the last I checked, doctors are people and people make mistakes. We've seen that this past year. Lots and lots of them. Teachers. Do, do teachers not have personal belief systems? Yes, they do. Right? So you might be learning in class about a certain topic and that teacher might be basing their personal experience or personal opinion. So what's happening? You're getting a somewhat varnished version of the truth. There may be truth in it, but it's a varnished version of the truth. Okay? Association. This one is dangerous. They're all dangerous, right? Your friends do it. Your church does it. Your mom does it. Your dad does it. I do it. Why? They do it. What? Really? I mean, that's the herd mentality. I'm not joking. And if you need any more evidence of herd mentality, take the last 15 months. Take the last 15 months if you need any evidence of herd mentality. People generally act in groups. They're sheep. For better or for worse, they are sheep. People are easy to control because they have similar thought processes. So, You'll do something because your friends do it. Or you'll associate with certain people because you think they have the same belief systems as you, right? You ever been to a car club where everybody has Honda Civics? You ever been to a car club where everybody has McLarens? Why? Well, they all have it. We must be interested in the same thing. It's association, right? Now, revelation is perhaps the most dangerous one in trading. Yes? A hunch, a higher power, a dream, intuition. How many of you guys trade off revelation? You know, a feeling, a sense about something, an inkling of an idea. Oh, it's got to bounce here. It just has to. Why? Well, it's just down so much. It just has to. Like, I don't think it will. It's going to. I mean, when will the insanity stop was a pretty good example of this today. I knew, RKT, I knew what was going to happen. Whoa. Wow, that's a powerful statement. You knew so well that you dumped everything you had into it, right? Intuition, premonition, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, okay? Sixth sense. Let's just call revelation expensive, right? We'll just call them expensive most of the time, okay? So we believe these things. So what are you basing your trading beliefs on? Here's the rub. You actually don't know until... You take your first trade, right? You don't know until you take your first trade, okay? So what are you really doing? I knew it would work. That's a hunch. That trade had no chance. Why did I take it? I see it, but I just can't push the button to enter. I don't have enough discipline for this. I can't believe I sold too soon again. I can't believe I'm still in this shitty trade. I'm constantly fighting myself. I mean, all of these are products of you not understanding yourself. Okay, so what I find it fascinating, I use this analogy way too frequently, but I'll use it again, because why not? 
it's no different than going to the driving range and just taking a bucket of 100 balls and just hitting your driver all the time. Why? Because it's easy. It's what's fun. Why don't you practice putting or chipping and putting, going in the sand trap? You ever notice how terrible most, most golf, golfers are in the sand? How often do your, your average golfer get out, you know, up and down out of, out of a bunker? 5% of the time. <laughs> Once every three rounds of golf? I don't know. Why? Well, they don't ever practice it. They don't ever practice it. Okay? So all these are a product of you not understanding yourself. Not understanding yourself. Right? I don't have enough discipline. Well, how am I going to get discipline? I can't believe I sold it too soon. Why did you sell too soon? I can't believe I'm still in this trade. Why are you still in this trade? Does that make sense? Why are you doing the things that you're doing? First is recognition. Okay, I'm, I'm not doing this right. Second is, how do I fix it? And we're going to talk about that too, okay? Why is that not going? Hold on one second, guys. I have no idea. What, there it is. Wow, it locked up on me. There we go. Okay, so what are some possible reasons? Well, maybe you don't believe in you. You just don't trust yourself. You lack confidence. Maybe you're not treating this like a business. Maybe you're just too lazy. Maybe you lack persistence. Maybe you didn't plan this out. When I say maybe, I'm saying that's what most of you have done. You just didn't, didn't plan this out. You just read somewhere about some kid on Wall Street Bets or read it and how he made, you know, he took $5,000 into $500,000 and you knew that you, that's what you wanted to do. That's what you wanted to do, so you're going to go do it. Did you really give it much thought? Not really. I just want to make quick money. Isn't it amazing, guys? Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, how do these infomercials on TV late at night, Ron Pompeo or, or what was that one? Don LaPree. You guys remember Don LaPree? Very few of you probably remember that. Real estate guru, right? What are the most popular videos on YouTube other than kids' videos? Other than kids. What are the most popular videos on YouTube? Either self-help videos or or get rich quick videos. Self-help or get rich quick. What does that tell you about human nature? You don't wanna put the work in. You don't wanna put the time in. You're too lazy. You don't have the persistence. You ever heard the saying, persistence overcomes resistance? Most of you aren't persistent enough to do well. If you wanna be great at anything in life, you need to stick to one thing and get really, really good at it. Once you're really, really good at it, branch off into something else. Why do you think athletes are so singular-minded? Because to be the best, you have to focus on that one thing. Whether that's Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or an athlete. You focus on that one thing. Now, moving along on that, you struggle to accept losses. You don't know how to control your emotions. You struggle to follow rules. You can't cope with change. You don't take responsibility for your actions. This is a big one in society today that leaks over into trading. It's always somebody else's fault. And this is where that group mentality comes into play. Well, Johnny lost on that trade too. So it's okay that I lost. Is it? The bank doesn't care that Johnny lost on it. The bank only cares that you lost on it and your account went lower. That's all that you should care about too. All right. You talk a good game, but you shrink under the pressure. I mean, you're a failure. You're a failure. What kind of failure are you? It's a big question. What kind of failure are you? We're all failures to some, to some degree, right? We're not perfect, so we could certainly make an argument that we're failures. Does failure define us? Have you set out to give yourself the best possible opportunity to succeed in this business? I think you know that's a two-letter answer and not a three-letter answer for 99% of you. No, you didn't. Very few of you came in properly capitalized with a reasonable timeline and a reasonable trading plan. Fact, very, very few of you properly capitalized, reasonable timeline, professional trading plan. But hey, you're going to get rich quick because somebody told me so on the internet. Okay, good for you. So, five types of failure. Failure to do your best. Failure to learn, failure to improve, right? Failure to accept responsibility, that's an ugly one. Failure to execute or failure to plan. Most of you fit that category. Failure to have the proper attitude. Hmm, 
Some people have too much confidence, but most people, they lack confidence. When they first come into trading, they have too much confidence because, well, common sense is a superpower and most people don't possess it, okay? So where are you on here? Now, you have to understand, as Zig Ziglar says, failure is an event, it's not a person, it's an event. So when I said you're a failure, that doesn't mean that success or the ability to succeed is impossible. It just means right now you're not there yet. So why are you not there yet? Are you honestly just too lazy? You're just not putting your best foot forward. You're too distracted. Are you not learning? You're not improving. Why? Maybe you're doing the same thing over and over and over without recognition that you're doing the same thing over and over and over. Maybe you're just unwilling to accept that you are the problem. You keep pushing it off on other people and say, well, it was Jared's fault. He, he called Sono today and that stopped out and I lost money on it. It's not my problem. It's Jared's problem. I need to find another chat room. F Jared. Some people did that today. 100% chance some people did that today. Okay. You have to take responsibility. Nobody came to your home and put a gun to your head and forced you to take Sono today. You took it because you wanted to deflect responsibility. Some of you took it because it was in your trading plan, but many of you took it to deflect responsibility and go, well, he's supposed to be the expert. He's the guru. Maybe he's a furu. Who knows? But I don't have enough confidence in myself, so I'm going to deflect and I'm going to take it anyway. Hmm, okay. Some people have a plan that's well thought through and well put together, but they're not doing a very good job on the execution side of it. This also goes back to your core beliefs. Who's actually trading, right? Are you actually trading or is a shell of you trading? Something you think you are, but you're not really. Meaning the evidence suggests you're this, but you don't believe it. Cognitive dissonance. It's too stressful to come over and recognition, accept it. I'm not that person. Guys, I know for me, one of the most common questions I get asked is, what are one or two things that got you over the edge, Jared, pushed you over the plateau. I get it all the time. Okay. One of them was the ability to execute my plan. But what had to proceed come before the ability to execute my plan? The recognition, the responsibility, recognition of who I am, the realization that my current plan is not who I am. My current plan is not conducive to success given my belief system. 15 minute pivots is what I was trying to manage on. Well, that ain't me. You guys see that? I'm a jittery trader, that's not me. So I was failing to execute my plan because I didn't accept the responsibility of who's really trading. I just thought, well, give it some more time. You know, this weekend I'll go for a little jog, I'll meditate, I'll study charts all weekend and Monday morning. I'll go from somebody who's selling for 50 cent gains to, to magically becoming somebody who makes $3 gains. That's a funny, isn't it? It doesn't work like that. I tell you guys all the time, life is not a Nike commercial. Just do it in terms of the effort, yes, but just do it in terms of the result, no. It doesn't just happen, okay? Failure to have the proper attitude. We're all guilty of this. How often do you let your attitude affect your trading? Every day? You start off with a loser. Now what's the immediate attitude? Pissed off, disappointed, frustrated, I gotta get my money back. Pissed off, disappointed, frustrated, I gotta get my money back. Well, that's a problem. You come in with a really positive attitude and you get slapped. Where's the positive attitude? Why don't you still have your positive attitude? Just one punch, so what? You come in and you take five or 10 winning trades in a row, now what? Ooh boy, my shit don't stink, I'm the man. Don't tell me what to do. I just won eight trades in a row. You should worry about yourself, Jared. You lost on Sono today. Pfft. Worry about you, man. What about looking at those eight trades and going, well, did I do the right thing or did I get lucky? What about Staying positive, but staying humble. You ever notice this? 
you win eight trades in a row, 10 trades in a row, you make 20 R one month, and you are the first person to give advice to everybody else. You lose 20 R in a month, and you are the first person to ask for advice from other people. And you guys, you'll listen to a homeless person on the street about trading after you've had a terrible month. Tell me I'm wrong. You will listen to some five-year-old walking down the street, skipping, jumping rope. I'll do anything. I just can't figure it out. I'm down 20. I don't know what to do. It's pathetic. I mean, seriously, it's pathetic. But when you're up 20R, it's like, hey, little kid, you want to make 10 grand next month? I know you're only three and a half years old, but I can teach you how to be a trader because I'm that good. It's ridiculous. Stay humble. Keep the proper attitude, which is no attitude. Stay positive, sure. But you're not that good and you're not that bad. You're neither. Okay? Failure is an event. It's not a person. So that brings us to there's only one kind of failure. Fact. There's only one kind. And that's giving up. Plain and simple. There's only one kind of failure that really matters in trading, in life in general. It's just giving up. Rejection, sadness, frustration, disappointment, they're just emotions. They're not failure. That's just how you feel right now because of an external event that happened to you and now it in, affects your internal outlook on the world. It's an external pressure on you that is affecting your internal belief or your internal feelings. They're just emotions. Rejection, who hasn't been through it? Sadness, who hasn't felt it? Frustration, who hasn't dealt with that? Disappointment every day. Somebody disappoints you every single day. It does, whether it's an article you read, whether it's a comment from your kids or your wife. But guess what? The opposite of all these things happen too. Sadness? No, happiness happens every day too. Excitement happens every day too. Acceptance happens every day too. All right? So think about it for a second. What's driving you? Meaning, are you letting that rejection bother you? Are you somebody who strives for acceptance? Well, both of those are important to understand. Because if rejection, for example, is something that really bothers you, one, either trading is not a good business for you, or, or maybe you need an approach to trading that relies on a high batting average. Maybe you need a 70% batting average because rejection is something you don't deal well with. Maybe it's not. But do you understand how that belief, how that emotion, how that thought manifests itself in your trading? But most of you don't understand it because you're ignoring it and you're thinking to yourself, well, it's just today, I'll, I'll get over it tomorrow. And then six months later, you're doing the same things without making any, any changes to it, right? The only thing constant in life is change. And what's the definition of sanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. That was me. That second one, the definition of insanity, that was me. Every damn weekend, I'd be like, I'm not going to sell too soon next week. I'm not going to sell too soon next week. I'm not going to sell too soon. Next week. I know it. This time it's for real though. No, no, you don't understand. This time it's for real. Bullshit. Was it for real the five previous months? Why would this month change? Is there going to be some pixie dust that falls out of the sky? No. No. Right? But, come on. Let's have a little sexy chart break. Come on. Let's do it. You guys are, you know, you're losing focus. You're losing focus. You guys can't be talked to all the time. You got to have some, some edification here. You got to be able to look at something tangible. Boom. <laughs> I don't even know if this is that great of a chart, but it's pretty good. All right. Wide range igniting bar. Narrow range resting bar. Entries 132.77, stops 132.35. Note the wide range igniting bar takes out the prior pivot to the left. The narrow range resting bar is in the upper 50% of bar number one. And, and this is the key, boom, look at the relative strength. Oh my goodness gracious. Where's the Victoria's Secret store? This is ridiculous how nice this is. Market gets hammered, Apple moves up. Market pulls back to support where it should bounce. Apple rips. Market ultimately tanks, so does Apple. But by that point, you're long gone. This thing went $1.50. I think we just hit target on this. I think we actually did. I think we just hit target on this. But you see it? 
beautiful pattern showing relative strength to the market on a stock that usually has a high correlation to the market. Bam. Woo. All right. Did you get your fix? Get that little shot in your arm? You got you got your fix? All right, let's get back to it. Okay. So now we got to talk about why why you do it. And then we're going to talk about some solutions. All right, I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. We'll, we'll talk about some solutions. Okay? Why do you fail to do what's necessary? Fear of loss, lack of hope for gain. It's not a loss until you sell it attitude. That's one of the worst attitudes you can have when a stock's going against you and against you and against you. You're like, well, it's not really a loss until I actually sell it. So yes, it's red and I'm down $17,000 and it's my entire life savings. But as long as I don't get out of it, I'll be okay. It's a terrible attitude. The need to be right. This drives most of us. Ego, 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 ego. This goes all the way back to the five mentalities, right? The tradition, the evidence, uh, superstition, et cetera, authority, whatever. Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you have such an ego? Serious. Ask yourself, why? Why is it when somebody tells you something that goes against your belief system, do you react so negatively towards it? Instead of being open-minded and going, you know, I'll take that into consideration. I'll check into it. You immediately put a wall up, build that wall as high as you can and go, no, I'm right. I'm right. And that's why people die with the lie. That's why it's so hard to say I'm sorry. If you, you know, even when confronted with truth, your ego still makes an excuse for why you held that that other belief. That's incorrect. You held it, though, for so long, even though you've now been presented with truth, like, un, you know, undeniable truth. And you're still like, yeah, but there's no but. Move along. Accept it. Sure, if you want to fact check it or do some more homework on it, fine. But if you come to realize, you know what? That's it. This is costing you a lot of money in trading. It is. It's costing you a lot of money in trading, and it's not manifesting itself in the way you necessarily think it is. Most of the time, ego manifests itself in a way of you not willing to change because you think you're going to change. You're like, Jared, what the heck did you just say? You're not changing because you think you're going to change. I'm confused, Jared. I gave the example of myself. I didn't make any changes to my trading plan because I thought I would change and adapt to my current trading plan. Does that make sense? So I didn't make any changes because I didn't think I needed to because my ego was so big that I was thinking, well, yeah, don't tell me I can't do something. I'll manage on those 15 minute pivots. Come hell or high water. Don't tell me I can't do that. But you haven't been doing it for the last five months, Jared. But I will. I'll get it. Just give me some more time. Maybe you might want to think about changing your management strategy. No. 15-minute pivots are where it's at. I married it. That's where it's at. Whoa. That's a pretty strong belief, isn't it? But the evidence, we talked about it earlier, the evidence suggests you're wrong. But your ego doesn't care. <sighs> brutal. 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 You know what the difference is, though, when you work for a company? Your ego doesn't matter because the boss will just say it's my way or the highway. And the highway means no more salary for you because you're gone. So it's much easier to change your ego because you're forced to. But the problem in trading is no one will force you to change anything, only yourself. You're the only person who can change because there's no external influence to force you to change. The market will teach you some seriously expensive lessons. That could be like a boss, but you know how it is. We all have pretty big opinions of ourselves. It's like when somebody asks you if you're any good, hey, you're a good tennis player? Oh yeah, I'm really good, I'm really good. And they're terrible, right? That's a problem. And we're gonna talk about this on the next slide. Don't worry, there's only like two more slides left, okay? Confusion, frustration. Is this why you do what you do? Basically, you don't believe in yourself or your trading plan. So how do we fix all these things? Here. It's a simple list to help you overcome some of these. Does this mean that tomorrow you're going to go, I'm a great trader? No. This is going to take you weeks, months, years 
to sort out all of this. But these are steps to help move you in the right direction. One, track all your trades so you have an accurate account of what's really happening. What does this mean? Give me some evidence. Show me the evidence. Okay? Show me the evidence. Track all your trades so you have an account of what's really going on. Video record yourself trading and play it back. Take notes. How many of you actually really do that? You may record it, but you don't go back and watch it or take notes. This is the evidence because without it, you don't know shit. You think something happened, but as we have seen in many, many, many cases in the last year, but I won't go there, what actually happens and what video evidence proves are two completely different things. Oh yeah, this happened. Well, the video shows something exactly the opposite of what you just said. Uh, oops, I misremembered. Uh, or maybe I had a motivation to misremember. Motivation to misremember, what? Yeah, protecting my ego. Protecting my ego. That's your motivation to misremember. Well, take that off the table. Track your trades and video record yourself. Take it off the table. That's it. Plain and simple. Okay? Crazy. But most people aren't doing this. It's true. Maybe half of you are doing this right now. Okay? Then, once you have the evidence, once you have the evidence, then you're going to put together a severe consequence system. All right? You might make some trading plan adjustments because the evidence suggests you should, but then you're going to build a severe consequence system, okay? And I mean significantly severe. Something that's like, whoa, I would never do that. And who's going to hold you accountable to this severe consequence system? An accountability partner. Someone you trust, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a trading buddy, whether it's a brother, sister, whomever, I don't care. But somebody that will hold your feet to the fire if you don't do what you said you were going to do. It's called integrity, okay? Society lacks it in, in a big way these days. All politicians lack it. Every single one on both sides of the aisle. There's no such thing as integrity anymore. But guess what? Here's the difference. Without integrity, you'll never be a good trader. Ever. Not ever. It's not like other jobs where occasionally you can do the wrong thing and still get paid. This, this is a problem in trading. So build a severe consequence system. Something so bad that you'll never, ever, ever, ever go against it. Get an accountability partner. Then put in the hard work, not just staring at charts. Go to your accountability partner. Go get coaching from Jeff Yates or Cliff or a friend or whomever and go, you know what? I'm really struggling with this right here. And I don't know why I'm struggling with it because I feel like I'm being open to it, but I'm not. It's not working. Work through it. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Then continually ask yourself, what's the alternative? This is a big deal. Okay. This is a really big deal. What is the alternative? Working for and dealing with a boss? Maybe driving in rush hour traffic. Maybe less freedom, flexibility, lower income potential. Put a list together. What's the alternative? Back to my nine to five. Back to being told what to do. Back to being forced to wear a mask. Whatever it is. What's the alternative? Hopefully... Hopefully, the alternative is so ugly that it, you just take it off the table. Just take it off the table. Like it's so, you're like, I will not go back to having a boss again. Even nice bosses suck, right? Somebody else telling you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. I don't need that. So what's the alternative? Because the why matters. We can talk about the how, but the why is more important than the how, okay? Set goals and stay accountable to them. That goes back to your accountability partner and build a severe consequences. If you don't do these things, just, just give up on trading. It's not a joke. Stop getting so excited when you watch somebody on the internet who took 12 cents into $12 million. It's not going to be you. I'm not being negative. I'm just telling you that's not realistic. They're either lying to you or they were fortunate and lucky. And maybe they are the one in a billion who actually did it the right way. Maybe. Get excited about putting your boots on every day. And putting in the hard work. 
that's what you have to get excited about. I'm not joking with you. Get excited about digging in the trenches, walking through the shit, putting those boots on, because that's what it takes, period. You will not get good at this if you're not going to put the time and the effort and the work in. If you're not going to give it a couple, two, three years, you're not going to get good at this. That's it. Sure, one in a gazillion. But guys, the term exception has a definition to it. (laughs) It's the exception because it's not the rule. You know what the problem is? Most of you guys think you're the exception. Well, you can't all be the exception. But I am, though. No, no, you're not. Okay? But that doesn't mean you can't be great at this. Right? And this is the part that, that bothers me. There can only be one Wilt Chamberlain. Right? There can only be one... Rafael Nadal, Roger Federer, whomever you want to talk about. Maybe there's a couple people close to them, but the vast majority of players in in sports are grinding, but they're making a good living grinding. You can be a trader and you can grind and still make tons of money and you might actually blossom and be an unbelievable trader. Okay? So have some realistic expectations. Check your ego at the door. Track your trades, video record yourself, build a severe consequence system, get an accountability partner. Number five, put in the work. Put in the work. Last slide. I find that often people think success happens overnight by chance to some people, but never to them. I've lost count of how many times I've been told how lucky I am to have achieved financial freedom in a short space of time. I like that first line. I find that often people think success happens overnight by chance to some people, but never them. If you believe that, just go get a nine to five job. McDonald's is $15 an hour now. I hear they're giving $500 bonuses. If you really think that success is just something that happens by chance, don't worry about success because you're not going to achieve it. I'll repeat it. If you think truly that success is just something that happens by chance, particularly overnight, don't worry about success because success isn't for you. Okay? This shit's hard. And I'm not talking about just trading. Success is hard. People that are very successful are not lucky. All right? Do they catch a good break? Sure. Just like you do too. Everyone catches good breaks. You just look at it differently. Do something long enough, you'll get good at it. You will. Most people, though, they're chasing their tails. They're changing from one career to this job, to that job, to this career, to that career. And they never give one a serious enough opportunity to be really good at it. Because the best people in the world at everything, everything, no exceptions, took decades to truly master. Decades to truly master. Boom. All right. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about belief systems. I didn't go crazy, crazy into the actual belief systems. We just talked kind of semi-briefly about those five, but how they manifest themselves in trading is very important and you need to be cognizant. You need to be aware of the manifestations that are happening in trading. And this is why video recording yourself and watching it back is an eye-opening experience. What seemed so obvious when you took it is a heck of a lot less obvious when you watch it on video later on, isn't it? Happens all the time. You're like, man, this looks like a really good trade. You take it, and later on, you watch the video. You're like, what the, what, what? All the time, right? So I hope you learned a little bit there. I understand that psychology lectures, uh, um, you know, I tend to go on a little rants and tangents at times, and they have less charts, and people lose concentration, but I'm glad most of you stuck around. I hope you learned something. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.